bi-directional EV charging. It's probably the most anticipated smart home technology of 2025, and it's finally here in the US. Several top vehicle manufacturers have already completed successful demonstrations of bi-directional charging. I'm gonna be showing you how it works and where you can find it in today's video. The smarter way to go solar. All right, now in today's video, we're talking about bi-directional EV charging, uh, and the fact that the technology is finally to the point uh, where it's able to be successfully utilized and demonstrated here in the US. And there, there have been successful tests with a number of the top electric vehicle brands. So what is bi-directional EV charging? Well, very simply, bi-directional EV charging is the ability to interface your electric vehicle with your home's power system in such a way that not only can you charge the electric vehicle, using utility power or using solar power if you already have solar panels installed on your home. But also under certain circumstances, you can draw energy out of the vehicle battery, which could be used to provide backup power to the home. Uh, or under certain conditions, you may wanna sell excess energy in your vehicle battery to the utility company to help balance out the grid. And usually, if you're part of one of these virtual power plant programs, the power company will pay you a, a huge price premium for that extra energy that you have in your vehicle battery. But why is this such a game changer? Well, the thing of it is, is your, your electric vehicle is gonna be one of the lowest cost per kilowatt hour energy storage systems available. And if you've already made the large investment in purchasing or leasing an electric vehicle, it would be great to be able to tap into that large high capacity battery that's already sitting there parked in your garage. You know, of course, the other advantage is to provide a long-term whole house backup. Now, those of you who've been following the channel for a while, you know that home batteries are expensive and they typically come in anywhere between 10 to 15 kilowatt hours per battery. But some of the electric vehicles on the market have batteries that could be quadruple that size or more. You know, it's not uncommon to find an electric vehicle with a 100 kilowatt hour battery or higher, which has the potential to run your entire house in a backup situation for multiple days in a row if you have inclement weather. So what's taking so long to bring this technology to market? Well, the first issue is standards. You know, right now there's sort of this question of who's to bring this or who's best to control how this technology is used. Should it be controlled all by the electric vehicle manufacturers or should the solar equipment manufacturers be able to tap into and access that battery how they want it? And so right now there's this sort of negotiation going on between electric vehicle companies and solar inverter and battery companies as to exactly how those two systems should interface. Of course, there's another issue here of what will the electric vehicle manufacturers allow in terms of battery usage. If you put this technology into daily use, let's say you're using the battery for daily self-consumption because you're in a, a time of use market and you don't want to incur peak rates on your electric bill, that could put additional wear and tear on the battery above and beyond what just using the vehicle for transportation would put on the battery. So there is this question of, you know, just how much of the battery will the electric vehicle manufacturers allow the solar system or the home power system to use without invalidating the warranty. But the reality is the technology is here, it's ready for prime time, and most homeowners want to take advantage of it, especially if they already made that costly investment uh, in the electric vehicle. So the question is not so much will the electric vehicle manufacturers allow it, but it's to what extent, how many cycles and to what depth of discharge can they use the battery? Uh, and that's actually a great time to introduce today's video sponsor, Schneider Electric and the new Schneider Home. If you're a contractor or electrician considering which solar and energy management system to offer, then you need to take a look at the new Schneider Home. The Schneider Home provides an all-in-one solution for solar, storage, EV charging, and intelligent load control. The integrated design reduces the total number of components, allowing you to dramatically lower material and labor cost. Schneider Home uses equipment that contractors and electricians already know, like the Square D QO plug-on neutral load center. For over 100 years, Schneider has been helping factories and office buildings optimize energy, and now this technology is available for U.S. homes. 
Schneider Home is the perfect solution for new construction homes or those needing a main panel upgrade. So if you'd like to learn more information, you can go directly to the Schneider Home commercial website or click the link in the description below so you can sign up to be a certified installer right away. Thank you Schneider Electric for supporting the channel and for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so how does this bi-directional charging work? I, as I mentioned, we've already seen successful tests with multiple of the top brands like Ford, Mercedes, and Rivian. So the first step in the process is the handshake. Uh, the handshake between the electric vehicle charger and the vehicle itself. So this is a low voltage communication protocol that goes back and forth to exchange information that's relevant uh, to both sides of the handshake. For example, battery state of charge and whether or not the battery is gonna be charged from an AC or a DC power source. Now, in the demonstration that I was referring to earlier, the electric vehicle charger wanted to charge using high voltage DC power source. So it essentially sends a signal to the, to the vehicle saying, you're about to be charged and we're gonna be charging from a DC power source. Now at that point, the electric vehicle essentially exposes its battery terminals to the charger, bypassing the vehicle's battery management system. I mean, you could think of this almost like you just walk up to the car with jumper cables and once, once you're hooked up to those battery terminals, you know, you can pretty much do whatever you want with that battery. The battery doesn't know whether you're about to charge it or whether you're about to drain it. All it knows is it, it's, it's to expose its DC battery terminals. And then from there, the bi-directional charger can determine whether it's going to push current into that battery to charge it or whether it's gonna draw energy out of that battery to invert it to potentially power loads within the house. And that's how this demonstration that I'm referencing was able to accomplish this. And of course, if you get the vehicle to expose its high voltage DC battery terminals, then that could be connected directly to the high voltage DC bus of a home solar and battery system. Uh, again, essentially making the vehicle just another battery connected to that home system that could be used to, to charge the battery, but, but again, also could be used to draw from the battery to power loads within the house, or in certain cases, to sell power back to the power company. Uh, in fact, if you haven't seen our previous video on bi-directional EV charging is here, uh, go back and watch the previous video where Point Guard ran a successful demonstration with the Ford F-150 Lightning, uh, the Mercedes-Benz EQB, uh, as well as the Rivian R1T. Now, when they ran the test, they were actually able to run the entire house off the Ford F-150 Lightning and also charge the Mercedes-Benz as well as powering all the loads in the house at the same time. So that's just an example of just how much power and energy is available in these high voltage, high capacity electric vehicle batteries. So this has been a discussion of bi-directional EV charging. Uh, again, folks, the technology is here now. So really all we have to wait for is standards to be worked out, uh, any regulations from the government that might be coming into place to govern how this technology is used. But the technical capability is there uh, as we've demonstrated in the previous video. So I believe we're very, very close to be seeing market ready products in this space. Uh, of course, if you're in the process now looking at different homes, solar power and battery options for your home, um, if you need to get a price quote, or maybe you've already got a price quote, you need to get a comparison to make sure that you're getting the right equipment and getting the best deal. As always, feel free to reach out to us on the link below here. You can set up a call with a solar surge expert uh, or just use the free online calculator tool so you can see how much solar and battery storage costs in your area. But that pretty much does it for today's video. I thank you all for spending some more time on the Solar Surge channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.